Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our latest Medicine for Members event. My name is Gisela Botello, and I am a Royal Free London elected public governor. For those of you who are new to our Medicine for Members events, these events are organized and chaired by our Council of Governors. Our Medicine for Members events focus on topics that we know are important to you, our members. They give you the opportunity to hear more about the Royal Free London services. Our topic tonight is MSK Matters, supporting patient health and well-being. Over 20 million people in the UK are living with a musculoskeletal condition, such as arthritis, back pain, and osteoporosis. These can affect your joints, bones, muscles, and sometimes associated tissues, such as your nerves. They can range from minor injuries to long-term conditions. Our MSK physiotherapy teams are instrumental in supporting patients' experience, physical and emotional challenges to have a good quality of life. They encourage patients to maintain a high level of health and well-being to help manage their pain and prevent disease. Tonight, you will have a chance to hear from members of our specialist MSK physiotherapy teams. They will talk about the patient journey, share top tips about how patients living with an MSK condition can take care of their health and well-being, and the steps others can take to prevent developing a condition. But before I hand over to our presenters, there are just few housekeeping points that I would like you to make aware of. To ensure the event runs smoothly, you are set up to view only. This means your cameras have been disabled and you have been put on mute. If anyone experiences connection or visual problems, a recording of the meeting will be available to you in the coming days. A link to the recording will be sent out to all members after the event. There will also be a Q&A session after our speakers have presented. We have had several questions submitted in advance, but please ask any questions you may have through the Q&A chat function on the right hand side of your screen. We will do our best to answer all the questions asked. Our speakers will not be able to answer any specific questions about your or anyone else's care or treatment. If your question is not answered, please send it to the membership inbox. We will let you know how to do this later in the session. If you would like to contact the Council of Governors with any questions, concerns or comments, please do so via the Governor inbox, which is on the screen now. I hope you enjoy the event and I'll now hand over to our first speaker, Amanda Michael. Thank you, Gisela, for your kind introduction. I'm Amanda Michael. I'm the Outpatient Service Lead at Barnet and Chase Farm Hospitals and I work clinically as a consultant physio in pain management. Um, I'm really grateful for the invitation for our musculoskeletal team to speak at this event this evening and showcase the work that we do within the Trust. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague Caroline, who is the service lead for the Royal Free Hampton, is not able to be with me this evening, and therefore I'm going to cover the various aspects of our MSK physiotherapy services across all of our sites in our first talk this evening. Next slide, please. So our involvement with patients with MSK problems begins at the very start of their journey. We have a team of first contact practitioners who are known as FCPs, working in a number of GP surgeries in Barnet and Enfield, who manage patients with musculoskeletal conditions such as back pain, neck pain and joint pain, where they would have traditionally seen a GP. FCPs are physiotherapists who have advanced skills and have gone through a robust competency process and they have 30 minute appointments with patients and they assess and diagnose them referring for investigations such as x-rays or MRI scans if required. All of our FCPs work in blended roles which sees them also sit alongside consultants in specialist hospital clinics which means they've got excellent links into the multidisciplinary teams and close working relationships with consultants which allows for patients to be directly listed from GP practice appointments for certain appropriate hospital treatments where it's needed and reduces waiting times, improving patient experience. SCPs can also prescribe medication if it's needed and offer expert advice on how to best manage MSK conditions, referring on to community services as appropriate or secondary care services when it's necessary. This role alongside the GP practice team puts an MSK specialist at the beginning of the patient pathway, ensuring patients see the right clinician at the right time. 
um, there'll be more about that later on in the presentations as we go through the evening. Next slide, please. So our MFK physios also support patients in the early stages following an injury. Virtual Fracture Clinic runs at both Barnet and Royal Free Hampstead and allows many patients to manage their broken bones effectively at home while reducing waiting times for those who do need to come into hospital. Physios support the orthopaedic consultants to ensure that patients receive the correct treatment and advice when it's needed. On the Royal Free site, a physio based directly in the fracture clinic reviews patients and gets them moving early, supporting their recovery. Next slide, please. Advanced physiotherapy practitioners work in a variety of settings across the trust, so both in community and in secondary care. Like first contact practitioners, APPs, as they're commonly known, are physios who have advanced skills and assess and diagnose patients with MSK conditions. The difference is where they sit in the patient pathway. So we have an APP, a team of APPs that work in Barnet and Camden Community Services, seeing patients referred by their GP for a specialist opinion. This role bridges the gap between primary and secondary care and ensures patients benefit from the most appropriate management, whether this is in the community setting or also identifying those who do need hospital based care. They work alongside the community physiotherapy team and support the treatment of patients close to where they live. These roles join up the pathway and share expertise between community and hospital services. We also have advanced practitioners who work in specialist hospital clinics across all of our sites at Royal Free, at Barnet, Chase Farm, but also Finchley Memorial and Edgware Hospital in specialities such as orthopaedics, rheumatology, pain, hand clinics and pelvic health. And these clinicians provide specialist secondary care opinion and management. And again, there'll be a chance to hear a bit more about the work they do in later presentations. Next slide, please. So each of our main sites has an MSK physiotherapy outpatient department that provides treatment for a wide range of orthopaedic, rheumatological, musculoskeletal and conditions for adults and a barnet for children too. The team help to restore movement and function when someone's affected by injury, illness or disability. We share expertise and best practice with teams working together to ensure consistency across the sites. Physiotherapy takes a whole person approach to health and well-being, looking at a range of factors which may be influencing patient symptoms, including tissue injury, lifestyle, sleep, exercise and stress. The team use up-to-date evidence-based practice to support patients, tailoring treatment plans to support individual needs. The aim is to empower people to manage their condition through education and enable them to take an active role in their treatment. Our service consists of dedicated, experienced and highly skilled physios and therapy support workers. They work closely with consultants and other healthcare professionals to facilitate the best possible outcome. The physiotherapy offer includes all of these aspects uh, mentioned here. So from face to face sessions to gym based rehab and, and telephone appointments when that's the patient's choice, um, offering appointments at times that are convenient for patients. Next. Why, please. A vital aspect of musculoskeletal rehabilitation and education is provided through group work. And again, that happens at, at all of our sites. Groups are often very motivating for patients and offer peer support from others experiencing similar issues. We provide a wide range of groups, again, led by expert clinicians in a supportive environment, and they include individualised rehabilitation and exercise groups, back to fitness groups, supporting patients to recover from back pain, and also long-term condition support groups, such as persistent pain and inflammatory back pain. Next slide, please. The hand therapy service is predominantly led from the Royal Free Hospital and provides specialist care to both adults and children with acute injuries or chronic conditions affecting their hand or forearm. The team includes physiotherapists, occupational therapists and therapy assistants. They work closely with plastics, orthopaedics and rheumatology consultants to rehabilitate patients after hand surgery and hand trauma, offering both inpatient and outpatient hand therapy services. 
hand injuries can be really debilitating because we rely on our hands for everyday tasks. So our hand therapists combine knowledge of both hand physiotherapy and occupational therapy to restore the hand fun function of our patients. Our specialist services include advanced practitioner trauma clinic, a consultant therapist clinic, a therapy clinic in the plastic dressing service, rehabilitation groups, and a steroid injection service. Hand therapy itself consists of education of injury, surgery, or the acquired hand condition, a tailored specific assessment for the patient, often custom made splinting of the affected hand when it's needed, wound and scar management, again, if that's needed, and therapists offer individualized exercises to preserve and regain function to enable returning to work and hobbies. Sometimes therapy can also include manual therapy, including joint mobilizations and soft tissue release, and adjuncts such as tools for scar management, a computer based rehabilitation program, or assessment of appropriate aid to daily living. We also support daily hand trauma clinics that are led by advanced practitioners to assess and diagnose hand trauma with decision making regarding a management plan, which might involve non operative management with hand therapy but also could involve manipulating fractures or listing for surgery, splinting or casting patients. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, MSK conditions can result sometimes in ongoing pain, sometimes referred to as chronic or persistent pain. Pain is complex and it's influenced by a huge number of factors, which can be physical, social and emotional. emotional. Um, but most often a blend of, of all of these. Our pain management teams, both in the Camden Pain Service and at the Royal Free team that are based at Edgware Hospital, take a must, must multi-professional approach to helping patients understand and manage their long-term symptoms. The team includes consultants and psychologists and nurses who work alongside the physiotherapists. We offer individual sessions and group-based work, supporting patients to live well with pain, exploring all the factors that are here on this diagram, such as physical activity, eating for health, emotional responses to pain. We help patients to understand what's important to them and how they can move forward towards their goals by working on these pain pillars of pain management. Next slide, please. We also have physios who specialise in pelvic health. They offer specialist assessment and rehabilitation of pelvic, bladder and bowel dysfunction for both men and women. Patients could be referred from obstetrics, gynaecology or colorectal and neurology surgeons for our services. And the, an example of a patient, of patients referred to us might include women in pregnancy with pain in the pelvis or men with incontinence following prostate surgery. Our aim is to diagnose a patient's condition and set out a treatment plan with them to achieve the best possible outcome. We offer one to one appointments with patients, but also groups for patients with pain in pregnancy. Our team also includes advanced physiotherapy practitioners who work alongside consultants in specialist clinics. Next slide, please. So we talked about the beginning of the journey for many patients with MSK injuries or conditions in first contact practitioner clinics or in fracture clinic. And we talked about the, the end of the cycle in our outpatient clinics, but also patients are supported to recover from MSK injuries or planned operations while they're inpatients in hospital. Therapy teams work with patients to enable them to return home and regain independence following surgery or injury. Uh, we also have physiotherapists who join a regular pain ward round on our hospital site to support patients who have complex MSK pain conditions while they're in hospital. And our entire therapy team supports hospital staff and patients to ensure that there's a focus on preventing hospital acquired deconditioning, which can have a long term impact on MSK health for patients. And following discharge, patients with continued musculoskeletal needs are then seen in our outpatient departments to continue their rehabilitation, offering good continu continuity of care for the patient. Um, and the physios will continue to collaborate with the medical team again, to ensure best care. Next slide, please. The patient involvement in our services is really important to us, helping us to see and understand the patient perspective and make improvements that matter. 
we embed the patient, the voice of patients into design and production of clinical and operational projects across the Royal from London. Next slide, please. And then this leads on to um, innovation and quality improvement, which is always at the heart of everything that we do in therapy services. Um, our kind of current and most recent projects include improving the pathway for patients with inflammatory back pain, a soft tissue trauma clinic, osteoarthritis care, effectiveness and cost in practice clinic, and improving our efficiency and outcomes with remote consultation. Next slide, please. Finally, patient feedback is also really important to us. We collect patient feedback regularly. These are just a few snippets from our most recent uh, feedback reports. Um, always particularly good to hear that patients feel listened to when they meet a physiotherapist and that their experience, they experience our staff to be knowledgeable, professional and friendly. Thank you. I'm now handing over to Emma Brooke for the next presentation. Thank you, Amanda, and good evening, everybody. So my name is Emma and I am uh, the lead of the First Contact Practitioner Service and the Advanced Practice um, Musculoskeletal Service. And I work clinically in advanced practice uh, clinics in secondary care at Barnet Hospital. Next slide, please, George. So who are we? Um, we are a team of musculoskeletal therapists, physiotherapists, and we are the most clinical or, or highly clinical senior level clinical team members. So we've been doing the job a long time, basically, and have had quite extensive training and competency training. And the competency, competency training normally takes about six months to complete. And just a bit of background as to how we found ourselves in these positions. Um, myself and colleagues won an award uh, back in 2015 from the Health Foundation, which allowed us to set up a first contact service locally in Boreham Wood, which ran for a year. And it was the data and results that we got from that, which allowed us to then get commissioning and substantive services set up in Enfield and Barnet. So where do we work? Um, currently, we're working in GP practices across Enfield and Barnet and see patients that have either referred themselves to us or GPs have referred to us with spinal pain, shoulder pain, hip and knee pain. Um, we currently have practices in six or Lowfield and five in Barnet, but we're expanding the Barnet services, and so those clinics will increase over the next few weeks or so. So, what do we do when you come and see us? So, as a patient who comes to see us, who've either been self-referred or referred by a GP, you might come to us when you've woken up two days ago with back pain, or you might come to see us and have been living with pain for 25 years. We take all ends of the spectrum, and when you come and see us you'll be treated um, holistically. So you'll be asked quite a lot of questions about your pain, about your history, about your, your lifestyle, your uh, emotional well-being. We cover everything. And we're very highly skilled in also ruling out anything that might be considered a bit worrying or a bit nasty. So we call those red flags. And that's things like cancers, infections, etc. So as part of that assessment, other than being asked questions, we'll examine you and we aim to give you a diagnosis. And sometimes to help that diagnosis, we use investigations, which Amanda talked about earlier. So we're all trained in interpreting MRI scans for the relevant body part and x-rays so that when you come back and see us as a patient, we can show you those images and we can explain what's going on and use those to give you a diagnosis. As part of that, you might also um, be prescribed so most of the clinicians can also prescribe but we find ourselves not necessarily prescribing but de-prescribing taking you off of some of the very strong medications that maybe are not effective or not going to be helping you and suggesting other ways of managing pain 
And one of the quite unique aspects of our service is direct listing, which Amanda mentioned earlier. And that means that in some clinics, if you need interventions such as spinal injections, we can put you on the list to have those done without you having to come into hospital to see another clinician, another consultant, have more investigations. We've got the pathway that allows to do that and that cuts down a lot of time um, for patients. If patients need further help, such as orthopaedics or rheumatology or referrals to pain clinics or physiotherapy, we will action that pathway so we can refer you. But as the final point says, we're not a physiotherapy service. We don't provide physiotherapy in those appointments. We're a management and guidance service. And if you need physiotherapy, we'll refer you, but we don't offer that in the sessions. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk to you about a patient that was seen by my colleague in the service last year, and we'll call him Tom. And Tom is a 32 year old teacher who first came and saw uh, one of the clinicians in May of last year. And prior to that, he'd been living with back pain and leg pain for three months. He'd seen his GP on a couple of occasions and he'd been prescribed some painkillers and he'd been shown some exercises, but his pain was horrible. It was stopping him from working as a teacher. He'd had to stop work. He wasn't able to socialise. He wasn't sleeping. He couldn't get any comfortable position and he was he was in quite a bad way. So he first saw the clinician in May last year. And when they examined him, they found that he had restricted ability to bend. So his ability to bend forward was very restricted and bending to the right was also limited. They found something called a straight leg raise was positive. And that basically means that when a clinician lifts your leg up when you're lying down, um, your pain in your leg comes on quite quickly after your leg being lifted. And his reflexes, where you use a, a special hammer and you tap lightly on certain parts of your body, his reflexes in that leg by the ankle were reduced. So the clinician will use all of these pieces of information, the examination, the information that Tom's told you, to try and put forward a, an, a, a plan of what that might be, what could be causing his pain. And the clinician felt at this point that he probably had nerve compression. So something in his lower spine was pushing on one of his nerves, causing his pain. So following some discussions with Tom, the clinician suggested an MRI scan, which he agreed to, and also gave him some exercises and some advice on how, how he could be managing his pain while he was waiting for his MRI scan. So whilst he was waiting, well, he had his scan and the clinicians are aware of when the scans are being done. So before the patients come back to us in clinic, the clinicians can see the scan and get them uploaded onto the system so that when the patient comes back for their appointment, they can they have the images all there ready and waiting. So the clinician saw the scan and this is Tom's scan. So you can see near the bottom of his spine, I can't point it out to you, but there's a big bulge that's sticking out from one of his discs. They saw that, they spoke to one of the consultants who works with us in the spinal clinics and between the consultant and the clinician, it was decided that he may benefit, Tom may benefit from an injection, a nerve root injection to try and help alleviate some of the inflammation and subsequent pain. So by the, by the time Tom came back to see the clinician, which was four weeks later in June, all of these discussions had already been had. So at the point of his consultation, he was able to have some very clear um, discussions about what might help him and injections were offered and he took up the opportunity to have them done. So the clinician was able to put him on the waiting list to have these done while still in the GP practice. Um, Tom was then called up for his appointment in pre-admission clinic in early August and went on to have an injection on the 11th of August. And he was very successful. He had great results. His pain went very, very quickly and he was able to return to work in September last year. So in summary, that whole pathway from the point of seeing the clinician in FCP clinic through to going back to work, that was four months. And that compared to the traditional pathway of someone who presents with pain like this, who then sees his GP, gets referred to orthopaedics, once in orthopaedics might have a scan, might have more investigations, that whole pathway itself might take twice as long, sometimes three times as long. So the benefits are huge. And Tom was naturally very happy about this, so, so gave some feedback. Next slide, please, George. 
And this is some of the feedback that we've had from the service. Um, I don't need to read them all out, but it's it's received very well from both patients and staff alike. And I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Chris, who's going to talk about the other services that we offer. Thank you, Emma. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm like Emma. I'm an advanced practitioner physiotherapist. Um, part of my job is also working in GP practice, but I'm going to talk about another aspect of my job that's working in a community MSK clinic, and we're going to explore a typical patient journey from these clinics through to having a knee replacement and then post-operative care by the physiotherapy team. Next slide, please, George. So here's the typical patient that may come and see me in a community, uh, my community MSK clinic, and I'll, I'll give you more information about. So she's Mrs. C. She's had seven years of right knee pain. She's previously had confirmed osteoarthritis on a knee x-ray six years ago. Around that time, she had physiotherapy, which is standard practice, and this helped at the time, and she's able to continue to self-manage her symptoms. Unfortunately, her symptoms have got worse than last year, and she's now struggling to walk short distances without pain, uh, walk upstairs, and, and her night her sleep is disrupted most, most, most days. Unfortunately, now the physiotherapy exercises are no longer helping, and most importantly, she's not able to engage in a, a key life role as a grandmother. Next slide, please, George. So here's a uh, flow chart of the different stages of Mrs C's journey and I'm going to explain how physiotherapy is involved at every stage. Next slide please George. Okay in terms of the community MSK clinic uh, we have two sites where we run these from within the trust that's Edgware and Finchley. Uh, referrals will come in from GPs and also from our team as well the first contact practitioners. Uh, we have six raw free advanced practitioners, physio advanced practitioner physiotherapists working these clinics alongside our colleagues at Central London Community Healthcare. So the type of patients that we referred to these clinics are adults uh, registered with Barnet GP. So these the patients that may will come here rather than straight into physiotherapy will be potentially ones with more diff extra symptoms that can't be fully explained that may need fully investigations. And in Mrs C's case, it, people that may potentially undergo a surgical intervention for a joint issue. Next slide, please, George. OK, so what can Mrs C expect from seeing see me or one of my colleagues in this clinic? Well, hopefully expert MSK assessment, diagnosis and management planning. We utilise something called shared decision making where essentially what me and Mrs C would be equal partners in discussing her plan. Within these clinics, we can, like um, Amanda has touched on, we can refer for further investigations if needed. Most importantly, we can refer onto, sec refer onto secondary care services if we, if me and Ms. Mrs. C have made that plan together. In her case, it would be orthopedics, but we can also refer to rheumatology and pain clinic. We can also provide those extra advanced practice skills such as corticosteroid injections. We have the ability to refer onward to physiotherapy again if that's what's decided. Most importantly, though, we can give a lot of reassurance, advice and self-management. And if Mrs C wasn't too sure about whether to undergo a knee replacement and needing more time, we can provide additional information such as a patient decision age, such as on, in this case, knee osteoarthritis. One of the advantages of these clinics is we can massively reduce unnecessary orthopaedic referrals. For example, if patients are not interested in surgery, and therefore we have a massive impact on reducing waiting lists. Next slide, please, George. OK, so Miss, we decide, Miss, Mrs C decided to give that she'd like to be referred for discussions around a knee replacement. So she would be seen at one of our secondary care elective orthopaedic clinics uh, at the Royal Free sites. So within these clinics, within the Royal Free team, we have six advanced practitioners working in both upper and lower limb clinics at both Royal Free and Edgware Community Hospital. As my colleagues have touched on, we have the same responsibilities as, the, as our medical colleagues within these clinics as we can list for surgeries such as drug replacements, and we can also refer and in some cases provide injections, further imaging scans, and again, further advice on rehabilitation and recovery. And Mrs 
sees case how long she's going to recover from her knee replacement what challenges she might expect and just discussion around goals next slide please george so mrs c has undergone her knee replacement so initially she can expect to be seen by the physiotherapy team on the ward so what we know is early mobilization after these surgeries is key so hopefully we can get her out of bed and into the chair day one we'll give bed and chair exercises her to get on with in the next few days the key thing though is getting her home safely with a successful mobility and stair assessment and we'll also work with our NGT colleagues in this case our occupational therapist to ensure mrs c has a safe discharge home uh, follow-up care will then be provided by the outpatient physiotherapy team at one of the Royal Free sites. Um, speaking from my home base, which is the Royal Free Hospital at Hampstead, initially patients will be seen in, for, after a knee replacement in the rehab group, uh, which will be given four sessions. However, that's not the end of their journey if needed. If Mrs C still got a bit of way to go to re, um, achieve her rehab goals, we can offer further one-to-one -one sessions. And after that, we can discuss her onward care, uh, her self-managing care ongoing to ensure that operation is success. And one of the things we might utilise is a community gym referral. Next slide, please, George. OK, another aspect to Mrs C's post-operative care that we'll be involved with is seen in the joint replacement clinic. Now, these are all partly orthopaedic uh, clinics. Um, they're normally um, delivered by an APP and also our colleagues in the nurse profession. So in this case, an advanced nurse practitioner. Uh, at present, it's me who's running this clinic as my colleague uh, retired in the autumn. So we'll see these patients on average around six weeks post-surgery or if they've seen some consultants may want to see their patients after the surgery initially. So we may see them around six months after that review. Uh, within these clinics, we'll see patients uh, every five years with an X-ray on arrival uh, up until the age of 70. And the good news, um, patients are, are quite reassured by this. They're never discharged, so if there's any problems, they can just call and book an appointment to see us if there's any concerns over their replacement. We can, again, in these clinics, order further X-rays if needed, if there's been a change in symptoms for example if mrs c had a fall three months ago and she's got some pain since then we can also have the ability to provide use our physiotherapy skills by providing further advice and guidance if mrs c has any queries about exercises or an activity she's finding difficult and again we can refer back to our physiotherapy teams within the royal free hospital sites next slide please george so this is some research that was carried out by one of the advanced practitioner physios on the Royal Free uh, Hampstead team. So she did this working with our research colleagues at Stanmore Hospital. So what, what she looked at was um, the effect of having APPs, um, physiotherapists placed within the orthopaedic clinics. So what you can see within these clinics, if you look at the last column especially, you can see that we've had a massive effect on reducing wait times. Um, for patients to be seen as a new patient within these clinics. So we'll have an effect by on reducing the necessary referral, both by reducing, reducing necessary referrals within the community MSK clinics, but also by being placed in these clinics, we're having an effect there as well, which is good news for patients. Next slide, please, George. So in summary, I hope I've demonstrated how the MSK physiotherapy team is part of Mrs C's journey at every stage of that flowchart and her care. Uh, APPs were able to provide high level assessment, diagnostic and communication skills. And I hope you've seen how we'll be able to, some of our roles are normally associated with our medical colleagues. And by carrying out these roles, we're able to relieve that pressure on, on, that, on our workforce in general. And we've been able to demonstrate good evidence that by placing us in these clinics, uh, we can reduce wait times for these secondary care orthopaedic clinics and people like Mrs C um, getting referred and treated and having a total knee replacement in good time. OK, I'm now going to hand over to Rob Jones, who's going to speak about musculoskeletal health and wellbeing advice. Thanks, Chris. So yeah, I'm uh, Robert Jones. I'm the musculoskeletal physiotherapy lead for Barnet and Chase Farm Hospitals. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, George. 
to just say there is a disclaimer on this, as, as we said earlier, that this is general advice. Um, if you have got a long term health condition or you have any concerns, then I'd suggest speaking to your GP or if you have another care provider, talk to them. So firstly, I guess talking about exercise is that government guidelines are there to promote sort of maintaining muscle strength into later life. They're there to optimise bone density, which can help be helpful in reducing the risk of osteoporosis, promote healthy heart and lungs. Um, and exercise has also been shown to have a positive impact on mood um, in general. So the guidance is that at least two days a week, there should be a form of strength training, whether that's in the gym or that's a Pilates based exercise where, where there's challenge and load placed upon the muscles. That's really important to, for developing that muscle strength. The other half of the guideline is that about 150 minutes of moderately intense physical activity. Now, what that means is that you, it's something that you do that gets you out of breath, but you can still hold a conversation. That could be walking, swimming, running, tennis, obviously, depending on how intensely you play. Now, the crucial thing with this is that the consistency is what allows our muscles and our connective tissues, so our tendons and our ligaments, to build a tolerance to exercise and activity. Once we've achieved the consistency, it's important to then slowly progress and increase the difficulty of the exercise that you're doing. This then allows the body to adapt further to the new challenge and reduces any complications that can result in that. But the important thing is to remember that these are guidelines based on research, but the reality is any activity is better than none. And when you're starting something new, start slow, build up, um, and you'll find that that's probably the best way that your body can adapt to that new challenge and that new exercise that you're providing it with. Next slide, please. So a lot of things, that, well, something we get spoken to a lot about is, is nutrition. So what we have found is that, that healthy body weight reduces the risk of other health conditions, such as type 2 diabetes, chronic heart disease, some cancers, uh, stroke and chronic musculoskeletal disorders. And what how that can be achieved is by eating a whole food diet, so eating a balanced diet of unprocessed food. So, you know, uh, the phrase eat the rainbow. So a variety of colours, textures is really important for developing uh, a um, strong gut health, which has been have shown to have a positive link to uh, positive mental health as well. But the, with the benefits to weight control and therefore it helps manage um, the heart conditions, the heart, the diabetes and some cancers. Um, but also it can help in the recovery and healing process. You know, if you are active and you're exercising or you've had surgery, you know, having having a balanced diet will help in the healing process of that. Also maintaining good hydration levels. Now, the aim is to try and drink between one to two litres of fluid per day, depending on the site, on your size and your activity levels. You may need to even drink more than that. Good hydration levels have been linked to better energy levels, better concentration, uh, a way of you know controlling your appetite, controlling your blood pressure, helps you recover from exercise and can in fact aid your weight loss. Um, so next slide, please. So lifestyle factors that can really have a positive influence on our musculoskeletal and, and, and in fact our mental health is well, one of them is getting outdoors, you know, being outside in the sunshine promotes the absorption of vitamin D, which is a really beneficial um, in maintaining bone strength. Um, but remember sun safety, you know, wear clothes with weave cotton so that it helps you protect from some of the sun. Long sleeves and trousers where appropriate. Wear a hat with a wide brim that shades your face and neck. Sunglasses with UV protection and high factor sunscreen are really important, even on a cloudy day. Um, Try to avoid spending time in the sun when the sun is strongest between 11 and 3 in the UK. Um, and uh, you may go without saying, but never use a sunbed. Smoking risks, obviously, there are direct links to preventing and slowing the healing process. So if you are having surgery, you are suffering from an injury, smoking, in fact, prevents oxygen getting to the tissue. So therefore, it can have a, a detrimental effect on how our body heals and it increases the risk of the long term health conditions that I mentioned previously. So try to reduce or, or stop if you can. Um, there are NHS stop smoking services that you can speak to um, or your GP can refer you to those locally if you need. But also alcohol, you know, look, there are links with poor sleep and worsening mental health with alcohol consumption. So if you can try and minimise that as best you can, um, that would be really have really have a positive influence on that. Next slide, please. So one thing we actually 
also get asked a lot about is sleep. You know, sleep is a really important process for rest and recovery of the body and mind. Seven to nine hours is recommended per night, but um, everyone has a sort of a, a optimum level. And I guess you have to try and explore what, what's good for you. But the thing we get asked about most is what's the best position to sleep in? The, the truth is there is no best position. The most important thing is that you're comfortable and you feel rested so that when you wake up, you're ready to go the next day. Things that can help with a positive night's sleep is if you practice uh, sleep hygiene. So giving yourself a fixed wake up and sleep time, but being consistent with that as best you can. Allowing yourself a 30 minute wind down time for relaxation is really important with dimming the light to try and reduce some of the stimulation that your brain receives and also reducing the electronics that we sort of, you know, phone, tablets, television, things like that between 30 and 60 minutes before you go to bed um, and reducing your afternoon caffeine can all be really positive ways of influencing your, your sleep and the quality of sleep that you get. Next slide, please. And then posture. Now, this, this, this is going to maybe surprise some people, but there is no link between posture and MSK pain. The important thing is you need to be able to adapt and change your posture depending on the task and your comfort levels. So trying to avoid prolonged postures if they're uncomfortable and trying to change those positions every 30 minutes. But one of the other, you know, I guess the two other foundations of, of positive physical and mental health is to socialise, to have fun, because if you can't enjoy what you're doing, you can't sustain it. If you aren't enjoying what you're eating, you, it's hard to sustain. So I would say as a top tip, enjoy it if you can. And next slide, please. Thank you, Rob. OK, so we're going to move on to our question and answer session, and we've had a number of questions that have come in ahead of tonight's session. So I'm going to read those out and then ask our panel to answer them as we move through. So first question we had was, can patients self-refer to MSK physiotherapy at the Royal Free London? I'm going to give this one to Emma. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, in short, no, not currently. So we accept referrals from um, hospital consultants, from APP clinicians and from patients who've been seen in fracture clinics, but we don't accept self-referral patients at the moment. But we are... Um, currently collaborating with a large MSK review in North Central London and the hope is that uh, patients will be able to self-refer once that review has been completed. So no now, but watch this space for the future. Thank you. Um, next question is, was, does the Royal Free London provide an osteopathy service as part of are MSK clinics and if not are there any plans to offer this in the near future and I'm going to go back to Emma again for this one. Thanks Amanda <laughs> thank you so currently we don't have an osteopath in our service we did have and he'd worked with us for many years but he retired a couple of years ago and um, it worked really well so we would be very open to having an osteopath in our service but currently we don't but we are um in partnership with the RNOH and that service that's running at the minute is looking at innovative, innovative ways of working. It's running from a hub in Enfield and they have employed an osteopath who works in there. So potentially the results of what he's doing could influence future models of care. So currently, no, we don't have an osteopath, but we're, we're open to that for the future. Thank you, thank you. The next question um, that came in, are there any pathways in place for patients to discuss their care with their physiotherapist once their course of treatment has come to an end? And I'm going to ask Chris for this answer. Thanks, Amanda. So, um, yeah, when it comes to discharge, patients are, it's obviously a, understandably an anxious time because, you know, patients are worried about symptoms reoccurring, also worried about having to go back in the system and all the wait times that that involves. So within the Royal Free Hampstead team, what we can offer is um, a patient initiated follow up or something called an SOS period where we have a chat together about how much time a patient would need just to have that reassurance that they could book back in if needed. So it may be three months, it may be two months, it may be less than that. 
but just almost given that safety line I find is really helpful and most patients don't need it to be honest so but just having that reassurance that if things reoccur they can call back in within the community clinics if patients again aren't sure and about you know our symptoms going to reoccur we can offer wait and see periods up to three months so if things change again they can book back in but part of you know our main part of I, what I see is physiotherapy is reassuring people and we have long discussions on discharge about you know future self-management also open and honest about symptom, MSK symptoms they do often flare up again and it's not been scared and it's making sure the patient has all the strategies in place to manage these flare-ups and we can also signpost patients to local community services I've mentioned gym referrals but also you know if a patient has mental health issues you know signposting to those resources as well because it's, it's all part of the patient experience of their condition Thank you, thank you. Next question that came in was, does the Royal Free London's MSK Physiotherapy Service provide care for patients with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? And I'm going to go to Rob for this one and just ask him just to briefly just explain the condition before you answer that. So Ehlers-Danlos is, is, a, is a complex uh, connective tissue disorder which can have a multitude of presentations, but one of those being uh, multi-joint pain, which is where as physiotherapists we tend to get more involved in. Um, and the, the long and short answer is yes, we do treat patients with that as Danos if if they're re referred by their their their, their primary clinician um, that's treating them. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm going to send another question your way, Rob. Uh, another one came in, which is: Is there any evidence that weight bearing exercises can improve pelvic bone health? And you mentioned some of that in your presentation today. So I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a there's a huge amount of evidence to support weight bearing exercise to promote bone health and and strong bones so yeah if as long as there is impact in that exercise so walking jogging um even jumping if you're feeling adventurous um then that can ha have real benefits to to bone density compared to things like swimming and cycling which won't have as much impact therefore less positive impact on that but there are other health benefits to those exercises so please um, enjoy them and um, so there's also some questions coming in on the chat. So I'm going to start with the first one on the list. Uh, so a question reference was made to the best possible outcome. When I previously saw physios, I was told that the NHS aim was to get back to 60 percent or so of normal function. Has the guidance improved? I don't know if anybody wants to take that question on. Go on, I'll take that. Oh, no. So, I mean, obviously, I don't know where you treated before and and how that conversation came around. But uh, as an organisation, we work towards your goals. So goal based treatment, really focusing on you as an individual and how you want your recovery to go and what direction your recovery wants to be in, whether that's just walking up the stairs or you want to run a marathon, we will tailor that treatment approach based on what you want. We'll then work with you, as, as Chris said, to work on a long term management plan, because sometimes what we can achieve in in a in a relatively small period of time may not be what is you know running a marathon for example so we work towards that and we'll agree a time at which your treatment stops whether that's whether you're at 10 percent 60 percent 100 percent that's that joint decision making process that we'll go through with you to ensure that we meet where you want to be and you're confident to get where you want to get to Um, next question, there used to be referral to London School of Osteopathic Medicine on Vichy Road. Does this still take place? I, unless anyone else wants to jump in, I'll answer this one myself. I'm not aware of any pathways to the London School of Osteopathic Medicine. It's a, a totally separate um, entity, entity to our NHS um, organisation. So I don't believe there are any referral pathways there. Um, next question, is acupuncture also included? Do you want this one? Or again, I can answer it. Um, we do have some physiotherapists within our teams um, on all of our sites who are qualified to treat patients with acupuncture. And if it's assessed to be a, an appropriate modality for treating that patient, and if uh, on discussion with patients that, that the patient 
would like to move forward with that kind of treatment, it might be it might be part of a package of treatment for that patient. Um, next one, can a GP refer you to another GP surgery in order to access an advanced practitioner? I might give that one to Emma. Yeah, I can take that one. Um, no. So if you're not in the postcode of the PCNs that we work in or the GP practices that we work in, unless you move, then you can't get referred. So you could get referred into the secondary care APP clinic potentially, but you wouldn't be able to see us in first contact GP practices unless you can't unless your GP's postcode is within the right area. Just wondering if there's anything to add, Chris, from a um, community APP perspective to that question. Yeah, part of the, the FCP service. So if, I think if you live within, like Emma said, the, the area, you can be seen at a different GP practice to see one of our team, but it would have to be within that um, that postcode area. So you may be seen at a different GP practice, but if you're not within the postcode area that provides the FCP service, then unfortunately you wouldn't be able to get referred elsewhere. So you may go through traditional pathway of being seen in a community MSK clinic or a straight referral to physiotherapy and outpatient services. My understanding is you still would be, you might also be able, even if you weren't in a GP uh, surgery that had an FCP, um, you might also be, you might still be able to be seen by an advanced practitioner in the integrated community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might access it that way. OK, I'm going to just come down the list a little bit. Um, do the Royal Free London's advanced physiotherapy practitioners work in other areas within North Central London or do they just see Barnet and Camden patients? And if they just see patients in Barnet and Camden, are there plans to expand this? Take that one. Sorry, Emma, did you say Emma or Chris? Or anyone. <laughs> anyone. Do you want to Emma? Um, so are we referring to advanced practice clinics or first contact clinicians? I think we're talking I would I would take that as first contact. OK, so um, Amanda, you might have to repeat the first bit of the question yeah. again. So the question is, do the Royal Free London's advanced physiotherapy practitioners work in the other areas within North Central London or okay. do they just see Barnet and Camden? Yeah, so currently our first contact practitioner team will on, only see patients in Barnet and Enfield and that's because um, the GPs that commissioned us saw the value in the service and bought into it. So we'll only work where GP GPs have funded the service and commissioned the service. So at the moment we're just in Barnet and Enfield, but with the NCL, which is the North Central London Review, I guess there's scope to 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 replicate this service or to expand this service further. Um, we, I, I guess just watch this space and see what happens. But we are already expanding in Barnet. It's just as word about us spreads and other people want to try what, what we offer and see the good results, then they're welcome to commission us as well. It's all it, it's it's about, you know, who wants us and who will purchase us, who will commission us. It's actually an, a, a, an important part of the overall strategy for uh, primary care nationally to uh, for all surgeries across England to be offering first contact practitioners um, within their surgeries. So I think expansion of FCPs more, more broadly than just our trust is, is coming. Um, OK, well, I've got a big one here. Is hoping for a cure for MSK problems ever realistic? Any thoughts? I think we could probably talk about this all night, actually, so we'll finish on this one. But any any immediate thoughts on that? My my first thought is that um, it very much varies depending on what the condition is. And of course, there are many, many MSK conditions who which absolutely resolve um, and, you know, become a distant memory in the past for the person who's had that injury. Um, but unfortunately, we do still have, um, as I say, some sometimes for a whole complexity of reasons where an MSK 
problem that maybe started as an injury or or um, something fairly small becomes persistent and and unfortunately isn't cured. Um, but I think I mean I've definitely seen over the last many years more research into pain and what makes pain persistent um, over the last you know it, it absolutely accelerated in terms of our understanding about pain. So um, you know what's possible in the future. I think probably with that, uh, we it's probably time now to for me to hand back to Priscilla for our summing up. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so as we come to a close on the Medicine for Members events, I firstly would like to say a big thank you to our speakers of the specialist MSK physiotherapy teams um, for their very informative presentations. And I'm definitely going to take some feedback off that guidance and advice uh, slides. Um, but also a big thank you to you, our members, for joining and participating in the event this evening. Please note if you've got any questions that weren't answered in the Q&A session, that they can be sent to the membership inbox that will be on the screen. And finally, to contact the Council of Governors, please email our Governor inbox again. The email is on the screen. Thank you very much and good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much.